12 University Prep Physics. Um, in the Dynamics Unit, we're looking at something called the Inclined Plane. And uh, all that means is we're looking at the motion of objects sliding down an incline, whether it be a hill like the tobogganers, um, I don't know what else it could be, but ramp, something like that, okay? And I guess not just sliding down, it could be moving up, but anything where the motion's on an angle and it's gravity driven is really what I'm talking about, okay? And, and, the, and the thing is, we need to be able to quantify, and that's put numbers to all the forces. And the first thing is to look at a system like this and identify that, you know, there's an angle, we have to figure out what the angle is, or most often it's given to us. And depending on the angle, how does that affect the force pulling in the direction of motion? So, the really, what forces are there? Well, in this case, there'll be some friction, I guess, on this toboggan. Um, which would be, you know, in this direction, okay, and which is really related to normal force. And normal force is always perpendicular to your surface, so it's up on an angle like so. Gravity is always straight down, so, you know, we might be tempted to say gravity is in this direction, but that's not true. Gravity is straight down, which, by the way, even though we say this is gravity driven, if you think about it, since gravity is straight down and the motion's off on an angle, Gravity is the driver, but it's not gravity pulling it down. We can't say that the, the force is the force of gravity. It's got to be a component of gravity pulling it down the hill. So looking at a free body diagram, um, what you've got here is the green are the actual forces, and blue represents um, components of forces, right, that actually do the... Um, do the pulling. This this blue is the component of gravity and it's opposite to normal and so it's important for that reason because we need that to find normal. Um, and then this blue one here is really the force pulling it down the incline. Okay, And it looks like it's equal to friction but that's only the case if there's no acceleration. If there was an acceleration down the incline I would draw this to be bigger. Okay. Um, I guess an interesting thing about the inclined plane is, you know, how we choose our positive direction. And we just take, um, you know, we don't want to deal with components very much, as little as possible. And so we say, well, let's just call at the positive x direction is the direction of motion. Not that different than if you're on a flat plane and pulling sideways or forward or back or yeah, forward or backwards, right? Then the x direction is the direction of motion, and y is perpendicular to x, I guess, is the idea. So, uh, you've already got this. Um, just looking at, you know, how do you figure out, the big one is this one here, how do you figure out the force pulling it down the hill? And we know it's got to be a component of gravity. And if I was going to pick this up, I could bring it, whoops, I got the blue one, there we go. Uh, you know, and I wanted to make a right angle triangle, I could say that the force pulling it down the hill is related to, it's opposite to the angle, so it's opposite to sine, or sorry, opposite, uh, so I can say it's a component of gravity, and it's going to be Fg sine theta, or just, you know, we call it Mg sine theta, Mg is Fg. So this is what pulls an object down a hill. And that works because as theta gets closer to 90 degrees, sine theta gets closer to 1. So if it was at 90 degrees, then the force pulling it down would be, would be mg. And then the, the less steep of a hill, the less of a factor of gravity. And, and sine of small numbers, say 10 degrees, is very small. But sine of 70 degrees is very big. And so it makes sense that it would be mg sine theta. Okay. Um, and then there's this here, and this is relevant because I want to find normal, okay? Um, and this would be, this would be mg cos theta, this component of gravity. So these are just components of gravity. The component pulling it down the hill, and then there's this one across from normal, which is a component of gravity, mg cos theta, because it's adjacent, touching the angle. So just looking at normal force, you've probably guessed that normal is going to be, uh, um, 
mg cos theta. And the reason that it is, you know, if we just wanted to look at it as a straight up and down, pretend you had a horizontal motion. You can't do this on your page, but I can. Um, so normal is up. And then the downforce, again, it's not gravity because gra they're, not, they're not sort of right directly across from each other. It's this component of gravity. So because this sleigh, in this case, or whatever's moving down the incline, isn't you know moving down or moving up, it, the net force in this direction, the y direction in this case, is zero. And if I call up positive, then Fn must just be equal to mg cos theta. And then that's just something you can remember now, OK? gives you a little summary, or I want to give you a little summary. These equations, they just hold true, OK? The force pulling it down the incline is mg sine theta. The normal force is mg cos theta. These things do not change, OK? And the friction force is going to be normal, mg cos theta, times the coefficient of friction. So often we assume no friction force, but if there is one, then this is what it is, OK? So that's, I'm just going to stop the note here. This is the background information on inclined planes, and then there's examples to follow. My suggestion, I know you probably won't, but my suggestion is to try the examples before you watch the video to see how you do, because you now you've got the basic equations. There's nothing that exciting about it. Um, it's just applying the formulas, but I will just show you those examples in, in the next video.